Hello, uh, my name is Jeff Tao. Thanks everybody for coming to my talk. Uh, I'm the CEO and the founder for TD Engine. TD Engine is an open source uh, project. I started um, uh, more than four years ago. Today, I just want to talk about the new data model I used for this time series database. Um, first of all, uh, I hope uh, everybody sitting here know time series data, right? Um, may I ask you a question? Have you ever used or heard about the time series database? Okay, too many. That's good. So, uh, for time series data, there's so many scenarios for time series data. For example, the energy. Like wind turbine or solar energy, they generate lots, lots of data. And also for transportation, logistics, even for smart manufacturing, like POC or SCADA system, generate lots, lots of data from automation system. Uh, and also, uh, even for example, for connected vehicles, even for the connected bicycles, for Uber, they generate tons, tons of time series data. So, uh, IT monitoring, finance, they are all time series data, right? Uh, so, uh, but uh, why we want to use time series data? Uh, uh, um, the first uh, purpose for time series data is to monitor the change over the time, right? You, you, you lo always look at the trend, just like a financial market. Looks like a little good. Okay. Uh, uh, and also, you want to predict like, uh, for example, for the uh, smart manufacturing, they always want, want to try to do uh, predictive maintenance. What time I need to maintain this equipment? For example, the elevator. What time I should provide maintenance for the elevator? What time I should provide the maintenance for my car? And another uh, big use case is abnormally detection. Uh, and of course, sometimes we do want to analyze correlation between measurements. Okay, uh, for, for the for first four uh, points, everything we do for time series data is we try to provide insights into operation, for like uh, IT operation, or uh, like uh, for smart manufacturing, we need to know the operation. Um, why I want to start a new time series database? Uh, I, uh, like almost seven years ago, when I look at the, uh, my startup working on smart devices, smart devices generate tons, tons of data. I, I found it's very hard to process those large, huge amount of data. Uh, then I found the InfluxDB. I found the Prometheus. Or there are a few um, time series database on the market already. Okay, but I found they are not good enough. Uh, why they are not good enough? Because they don't take the full advantage of those characteristics of time series data. Let me explain to you for what I found for time series data. Like, uh, for example, uh, the number one, of course, is always time stamped the data. Number two, I see. For all those data generated by sensors, devices, they always structured the data. For example, it's just the floating number. Most of the time, just the floating number, or some integers or some state, especially for smart manufacturing for many, many cases. Okay, uh, the third one is just like a string. Every device, every sensor is just like a string. They are generating data at the fixed intervals, like every one second or every 10 seconds, they generate the data point, right? So, and also, each string is independent, okay? You can have one million data strings. For example, for the smart meters, even maybe in the whole Spain, there are more than 10 million smart meters. Each smart meter is a data string. Right? And also each smart meter is independent from other smart meters. Uh, number four, the data rate is very stable. Because once you have the sampling rate, you know the number of devices, you know the sampling rate, you know how much traffic it can generate. Right, so unlike like a holiday uh, in hol like in Christmas or other holiday season, the traffic to Amazon will be uh, maybe ten times higher. Right, like for a popular game, it will be ten times higher the traffic. But for IoT, for smart manufacturing, for many cases, for time series data, the data rate is very very stable. 
And number five, compared with the standard database, transaction is rather required, okay? Because no change, no update. Uh, you don't need a row bike. So that's a big, big advantage, uh, okay? Number six, you can have more write than read operation. So uh, for time series data, people seldom check the raw data by eyes, not, not like social media. When you post something on LinkedIn or Twitter, many people view your tweets or posts, right? But for time series data, like the data generated by smart meters or by Uber, Few people will look at the raw data. Uh, it will be checked only by analytical tools, okay? So uh, the pattern is different. And of course, I said that the data is really deleted or updated. And also, there is always a retention policy because you don't want to save those data for too long time. You, you, maybe you just want to keep the data for one month, three months, or just one week, okay? Uh, then you want to delete it automatically. Uh, uh, number nine, there is a big characteristic for time series data. It's real-time data computing is required, real-time. Without the real-time analytics, IoT, or like smart manufacturing is almost useless. Because they, uh, by real-time analytics, they want to raise alarm or tell you something was happening, right? Uh, and also, uh, the last characteristic is the query is always in time and the space range. When you query the data, you always have a starting time, ending time, right? And also, you always want to fix in which location. For example, I just want to search the the smart meters in the whole Spain or billboard, right? So you always have some range, okay? Um, there are already many time series databases uh, uh, on the market. They are all also open source. The most popular one like is InfluxDB. Uh, uh, another one is called TimescaleDB. TimescaleDB is based on Postgres, okay? And also our TD engine, and like uh, another one, QuizDB, Prometheus, OpenTSDB, Victoria Metric, many, okay, on the market. Uh, uh, but what's the special, okay? Why you, why you want to delete a, uh, uh, invent a new um, view, right, or new uh, time series database? Because I, when I check the data model, there are a few data models for the time series database. The first model is a very popular model. It's, it's called the tiger set data model. Uh, every time series is uniquely identified by a metric name and the set of tags. Okay, it's used by InfluxDB, OpenTSDB, Prometheus. Okay, every time series, like uh, for like for example, I give you example here, like for a vehicle, okay, for a car, uh, for Prometheus or OpenTSDB, a time series for connected vehicle could be written like this. Like you have a uh, vehicle identification number, then you have some tags like a brand, model, right? Then for influx DB, a time series for connected vehicle can be written in this way. Uh, like uh, uh, the matrix and the uh, vehicle identification number, brand, tags, right? So uh, every time series is always unique, identified by the metric name and the set of tags, okay? Uh, but there is another model, it's relational data model, just like uh, MySQL, like uh, Oracle. Uh, regular database. This database, uh, uh, for, for this model, is a schema is always defined first, okay? Uh, there is always a timestamp column, and each matrix has a dedicated column and a data type. So, for example, for time scale DB, because it's based on Postgres, uh, one table to store the tags, another table to store the time series data. So when you wanted to query all the data for the Tesla Model 3, S3, so the SQL statement should be by a join, you know, right? You need a join, uh, uh, the table we save the tags and the join the table with the, uh, save the, uh, join the table with the matrix. So you need to join two tables together. Okay, that's uh, QuizDB also use this model, QuizDB, okay. Uh, TimescaleDB, QuizDB use this data model. I, I've, I propose a new model. 
in uh, when I checked all those databases, I found that I can propose a new data model. Uh, it's still based on relational database, but uh, my model is a little bit different. I give a name, it's called one table for one data connection point, or just one sensor. If you have one million smart meters in my data model, you need to create one million uh, tables. If you have one billion uh, smart meters, for example, in China, there are over one billion smart meters, then you need to create one billion tables with my data model, okay? So why, what's the benefit to create one table for one smart meter, okay, for one table or for one sensor? Uh, let me give you a very simple example, just look at the smart power meters. For, for the smart power meters, uh, maybe you have multiple smart meters, like a device 1001, 1002, 1003, right? Each smart meter uh, takes the matrix like a current, voltage, phase, and also each smart meter has some types, like a location, type. So if you design your data model by MySQL or only relational database, you, you probably, most of the developers will uh, create the schema like this. The first column is device ID. The second column is timestamp, right? So, and also probably you will create the index for the device ID. You will also create the index for the timestamp. It's very straightforward, right? Okay, but if you look at this, if you look at this design, there are some problems. Uh, uh, be, uh, be, be, because every device uh, for the data points, every device has different network latency, okay? So, uh, because of the network latency, the timestamp cannot be guaranteed in order, maybe out of order, okay? And also, um, each smart meter has a different data pattern. Maybe the power usage in your home is totally different from the power usage at my home, right? So data pattern will be different. Uh, uh, then if I create one table for one data connection point, since it becomes very straightforward. No, just look at the one table for one device. Then the timestamp will be in order because although there are some network latencies for each device, but the relative order can be guaranteed. So data, when you write a new data record, it becomes a data appending operation. So data ingestion rate can be much higher, right? Because you just append the data for each table, so it's much faster. And also, uh, you don't need to save the labels for each row. Uh, labels can be saved just one time, so you can uh, save storages. And also, another thing I talk about is the data compression. It will be much easier to compress the data because the data pattern for each device is very similar. Okay, uh, <coughs> oh, by this way. Okay, so uh, I I, uh, I I summarized the benefit of the design. Records are automatically sorted by time, right? And simple append operation for writing new data, and also less fluctuation in a column values. And the device and the uh, and the label will not be separate stored separately. Okay, uh, uh, how to how to store the data for each table? Uh, uh, for 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 single table or for single device, I just store those data block by block. Okay, maybe each block contains like 1,000 data points. For for my PPT here, I only show like six data points. Okay, uh, but inside each block, the the timestamp is already in order. Okay, of course, every table will have many blocks, so I will create a uh, block index. So once you tell me what's the starting time, what's the ending time for your query, I know, I know how to locate the blocks right away, right? And also, there is another uh, beautiful thing for time series data. For each data block, I already have pre-computing. For example, the count, uh, how many data uh, points for each block, like what's the uh, total sum, What's the, what's the max, what's the minimum value for each block? It's already stored there. So when you just want to get the uh, average or max for, the, for a time series, I don't need to scan the raw data. It's very, very fast, 
okay? Uh, and another good thing is for, for each block, I also have a schema defined. Because sometimes your schema can be changed, okay? So in, in front of each block, I, I have the schema. If you, your schema is changed, I would cr just create a new block. But for each block, the schema is always the same. Okay, so for like an IoT case, for smart manufacturing, even for logistics, for many cases, your schema can be changed, but it won't be changed every second. <laughs> you know, right? Your schema can be always be constant for maybe for a few days. Okay, it, it can be subject to change, but it won't be changed that often. So each block has the same schema. Okay, so. Uh, now, let me look at the, uh, uh, the how to store uh, uh, those data. It's based on column-based st storage. Column-based, uh, for the standard database, it's just uh, store those data row by row, right? Uh, row by row. Uh, okay, I think everybody knows this, uh, row by row. But for our time database, we always store column by column. It's column-based storage. So I, uh, I, I store the timestamp first, then store the current, then store the voltage, then store the phase, right? So uh, uh, every time series database, and also like even ClickHouse, many OLAP database, they always use column-based storage. But we can, TD Engine can still achieve much higher data compression ratio compared with other column-based database. Why? Because for one table, one device, the, the data is almost the same, you know, right? Because like for example, uh, the power usage at your home, of course there's some fluctuations. Sometimes you turn on your air conditioner, sometimes you turn off your air conditioner. But uh, for, for a period, almost the same. Right? But if you mix uh, your power usage at your home with the data uh, from my home, my home's data totally different from yours, although it's column-based storage, then it's harder to compress. Okay? So for our compression, uh, we always do data first. Okay, so for, for one, one table, one device, uh, you put uh, those data don't fluctuate that much. So it's much easier to compress those data. So we achieve very high data compression ratio by using one table, one device. Okay, uh, uh, for, uh, okay. so let me summarize by using one table, one device is uh, um, uh, uh, we can ensure read, write efficiency of single data connection point is the best. I don't think you can think about other good way to read or query data for one single table. One table, one device is the best way to ensure uh, the best performance for single uh, uh, device, okay? But, there are big, big challenges for this data model. <laughs> because I just mentioned, if you have one million uh, smart meters, you need to create one million uh, tables. Even you have one billion smart meters, you need to create one billion tables. And also, each table has some tags, right? Sometimes you want to aggregate the data together. For example, I want to aggregate all those smart meters in Bilbao, right? Maybe in Bilbao, there are one million smart meters. How do you do the aggregation? <laughs> then it's becoming complicated. Okay, how do you solve this problem? That's a big, big, big challenge for, for my data model. Then, I'm lucky, I got an, another idea. It's called a soup table. Just this soup table is designed for efficient aggregation of uh, tables, okay? So what is the concept of soup table, okay? Uh, soup table is just a type of data connection point. It's a template. It's a kind of uh, category. So for example, for the smart meter, uh, smart meter is a category, okay? Tesla is a, another category. Or maybe you have Elevate is another category of devices. For each category of device, you create a soup table because they share the same data schema, you know? Oh, okay, now let me just give you an example. Uh, 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 give, 
uh, the example, I create the super table for the smart power meters. Okay, uh, so the table, just create the table, smart meter, you can have the schema, have a timestamp, current, voltage, phase. But uh, compared with the standard database, I have an extension, it's called the tags. Tags. Tags is a static attribute, it's like a location, okay, and the type. I just have two tags. Now, when I uh, uh, now, now I use the smart uh, soup table as meter as the template to create the tables for like for for example for six smart meters. Uh, then I just just look at the uh, 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 the syntax below. Like create the table T1 using S meter. Then for this smart meter, I specify the types. Sinho Sai, California Sinho Sai type is one. Uh, the second one is like California Palo Alto uh, type is two. So I use the soup table as the template, but specify the tags. So compared with the standard database, each table, you can associate a set of tags with each table. OK? The, the schema for each table is defined by the soup table. But you can associate a set of tags with each table. Now, when you try to aggregate uh, uh, the data, you don't look at those table. You just check. You just create the soup table. For example, create the average voltage and the maximum current of all smart meters in California San Jose. Uh, you just like say select average max from smart meter from soup table. Uh, specify the tiger field condition. That's it, right? So uh, when you want to do aggregation, you always query the soup table or the, uh, the category of a device, okay? Uh, uh, then uh, everything is becomes much simpler, okay, from, uh, from the user experience. And also, each tag uh, can be a tree structure. And you can associate multiple, multiple tags. Uh, like a TD engine can support like 128 tags. Each tag means a different dimension. For example, you can have a tag for uh, location. You can have a tag for uh, like a model. You can have a tag for like a, uh, maybe what kind of business. Like for each smart meter, maybe it's for home or for business, for small business or for big business, maybe may different, right? You can associate many, many tags. Then you can do multi-dimension analysis, okay? Uh, and also, uh, how to improve the efficiency, uh, our design, how to make it very, uh, from the user experience, it, it becomes very simple. You just need a query for aggregation. You just need to query the super table. But how to make it efficient? Look at the risk diagram. I always store those tiger, tigers in a separate storage. It's called the tiger data. I always store the time sense data in in a different uh, storage. Se I always separate the tiger data from uh, time series data, unlike like a low SQL database, like for example, for uh, HBase. Uh, HBase is a typical KV store, right? Uh, you always have the key. Key is always like the, like for uh, InfluxDB Prometheus, the key is just a metric name plus some tags, right? So, but they mix them together for HBase. But for our design, we want to separate the tiger data from metric data. Now, if you want to query the smart meter located in California, San Jose, you, I go to tiger data first, find what devices, right? What tables I need to search. Uh, but that the, the data set, uh, the tiger data volume is small because each smart meter only have one row of data there, right? If you have one million uh, smart meters on the tag data, it only has one million rows. But for uh, time series data, each smart meter maybe have one million data points. Uh, if you have one million uh, smart meters, you can have one billion, <laughs> or I mean, I mean one trillion uh, data points. So I always go to tag data first to find out based on your tiger field condition, I find out what, uh, what tables you want to look for. Then I go to time series data. 
So looks like a design is a dimensional table. Tiger data is like a dimensional table. Uh, time series data it looks like a, a, a fax data. Okay. Uh, so it makes efficient. So uh, we solve the problem by using soup table concept. So it becomes very efficient for, for the aggregation. Uh, okay, S um, now, uh, so by using the new data model, what do you got? Let me show you the benchmark, okay? Uh, for the benchmark report, by using our new data model, I compare the TD engine with uh, InfluxDB and the TensorFlow okay? Uh, we are using the uh, open source TSBS uh, testing benchmark. Uh, those test, uh, testing benchmark uh, is proposed by InfluxDB and the TensorFlow. They all use TSBS for benchmark report. So look at the, like uh, our data ingestion rate. Uh, TD engine is uh, at least like 1.5 times fast. In some cases, even even it's 10 times fast with the, uh, the same data set. For the query response, is at least like uh, 1.2 times fast. In some cases, it's even 40 times fast, okay? Uh, so, uh, data ingestion rate higher, and also query response is higher. Uh, look at the disk usage, because we can compress the data very well. Okay, uh, in the worst case, we can be like a, um, 1.2 uh, better than InfluxDB. We are much, much better than TensorFlow. Uh, in some cases, we are even 10 times better than uh, uh, Influx or uh, TensorFlow for data comparison ratio. Okay, uh, and look at this uh, server CPU usage. We are much, much lower. Okay, we don't consume much CPU usage. Okay, and also our benchmark report you can download from our website. You can, uh, we, we also provide the testing script. You can, you can run the testing by yourself, okay, uh, to verify our report. So it means our new data model really works, okay. Our new data model is more efficient. Okay, uh, and also I want to take some time to talk about the scalability. Uh, our our design is just the uh, is just the distributed design, just like many other NoSQL database, just like Cassandra. Before my session, the Cassandra is talking about here. Uh, uh, it's uh, I don't want to talk about more about it because I, uh, I don't have much time left. Uh, so we we divide the data okay into uh, shards, each shard or each code each V node V node. Uh, there are multiple data nodes. In each uh, data node, we can have a V node. V node contains the uh, time series data. Besides, each V node can have three replications to provide the high availability. And also, besides the V node, we also have a management node. Each node report to management node for their status. And also, our design uh, uh, separates the compute from storage. So we have a query node just for computing. So uh, uh, the computing power can be adjusted dynamically. And also, uh, we divide the data in two dimensions. Okay? You have a big, big data, uh, a huge pie. But we divide the data into two dimensions. One dimension is by time. Okay, for, so for each file, it contains data maybe only for one week or one day or even one month, right? But another dimension, I divided the data based on devices or sensors. Each block only contain a number of sensors data, you know? So it's very natural to divide the data uh, in, uh, by two dimensions. Uh, then it's easy to conquer the big data problem. Okay, uh, and also we solved the high cardinality issue by our design. Uh, our design, uh, now we, uh, by our own testing, we can prove, we can support over one billion tables, one billion tables, without any performance issue. Uh, okay, uh, and also the whole system can restart within one minute. 
Yeah, uh, high cardinality issue. Uh, and also, uh, another thing I would like to address is, um, because when I started the TD engine project, I want to differentiate our database from TD, from InfluxDB or TensorGL or QuizDB, so the Tensor's database. Uh, I add more features, okay, into our database. It's not just the uh, Tensor's database anymore, because for Tensor's data, Besides the database, you always need a message queue because like for smart manufacturing, for IoT, once you connect the data, many applications want to consume the data, right? So you put the Kafka there. And also, uh, you always need a radius for caching because, for example, I want to know the current reading. I want to know the current location for each Uber, right? Uh, you, you always put the latest data in radius. Okay, and also you need a stream polarization for real-time analytics. So you put like a Spark or Flink over there. So for even for the very simple tensors data, the whole system becomes very complicated. Then I, my idea is I want to combine those four pieces into one single piece, just into TD Engine. So it can reduce. Uh, so it can reduce the complexity of the whole system. It can reduce the operation cost. Okay, uh, uh, and also uh, another good thing is I open sourced the uh, our whole uh, code. Okay, um, uh, in 2019, I open sourced the single load edition. Uh, in uh, year 2020, I open source the cluster edition. Like InfluxDB doesn't uh, open source the cluster edition, but we open source our cluster edition. Uh, last year, just one year ago, we even open sourced our cloud native edition. Okay, uh, nobody open source the cloud native uh, edition. Uh, up to now, we already have over 21,000 stars. Uh, we have like uh, 4,700 folks, a very active project. Uh, I'm very proud of this uh, because every day more than 500 new instances running in the from uh, all over the world. Okay, every day, every day more than like 1,000 clones on GitHub for our open source project. I, I hope you, you guys can check our GitHub site. And also, uh, because we are, a, uh, we are backed by venture capitals, we still need to survive. <laughs> How do you survive? We, we, we try to use cloud service. So we provide cloud service uh, on AWS, on Azure, on Google Cloud. Uh, um, after this talk, you guys can uh, try uh, our cloud service. Uh, service is free. And, and uh, uh, you, you can check, uh, you can compare TD Engine with InfluxDB or TensorGLDB or whatever, okay? Uh, uh, to make it, um, yeah. So uh, that's my sharing, okay? Uh, um, uh, that's my, uh, my talk. Uh, that's my uh, back, uh, QR code for my LinkedIn. Uh, I hope you can connect with me. Uh, and also, you, if you like, you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, I'm a developer, uh, actually. Also, I'm the CEO for this company. <laughs> I'm the developer. Uh, actually, I, for the first the prototype, I spent two months at home to write the first prototype to prove my data model works. I wrote like a, uh, almost uh, 20,000 lines of C code to prove my data model works. Then I started to raise money from venture capitals. Now I have uh, like almost the 100 employees team. Okay? Yeah. So, only questions. Uh, I'm a C programmer. <laughs> okay, I'm not a Java programmer. <laughs> I, I write the C code. Okay. You guys are, okay, please. Yes. Oh, no, no. Oh, we have built in, we have built in caching, built in stream precision, uh, built in data subscription. Uh, we don't want to replace Kafka. We don't want to replace Flink because they are very powerful. But uh, for time series data, uh, we have a much simple solution to make it work. For example, for the caching, oh, we, uh, for radius, it's a generic caching tool, right? Uh, 
Uh, what data you want to be cash? If you read more, that depends on reading. But for IoT data, for time series data, you always just want to cash the last record because the latest data. So it's much easier to implement, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, and also for data success, uh, I can share another, if I have time, maybe in another meeting I can share. Uh, I, our design, everything is based on bin log, based on WAL, uh, right ahead log. So, uh, based on WAL, we provide the data subscription very easily. And based on WAL, we provide the stream precision for time series data. So it's a very simple solution for time series data. Yeah. Oh, Prometheus. Uh, Prometheus is a very, very good product for DevOps. But Prometheus doesn't have a good scalability. Okay, and Prometheus only handle uh, like uh, floating numbers. They don't handle like uh, uh, strings or those stuff. And uh, Prometheus don't handle like out of order data. But uh, for IoT, for smart manufacturing, you have to handle out of, out of order data. But for like DevOps, uh, out of order data is a lot there. <laughs> and also for DevOps, they always matrix. They don't need to handle strings, <laughs> okay? So Prometheus is very good for the DevOps, okay? But for us, we focus more on industry internet and also focus more on IoT. Yeah, okay. Uh, any more questions? I really like to answer, yeah. Uh, a benchmark of what? Oh, no. Oh, I don't. I, don't, I cannot get the uh, uh, executables. Yeah. If they provide me free one, I can. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay, it's good. So, we, we provide very good high availability, okay? So, each, each shard, each node has three replications. Even one, repl one node is done, as long as two nodes are working, the whole system is still working. Of course, my, we have a very good uh, uh, observability uh, uh, platform. We use Grafana to provide the, we'll give you a load, say one load is done you better make it work, right? But uh, there are still two nodes working, so the whole system is still working. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, uh, if one node is down, uh, there are still two nodes are working, the whole system is still working. Then when you the, uh, that load is back, the data will be synced first. Yeah. We use Raft. We just use standard Raft for data replication, Raft. Yeah. OK. Uh, anyway, uh, I will almost run out of time. You guys are welcome. Uh, to connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, I, I spend the most time in California, okay? Uh, um, uh, my office in, is in San Jose, California, okay? Okay, you, 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 uh, thanks a lot, okay? Yeah.